Hello there, YouTubers, and cheers. Nice cup of uh, Swedish coffee here. So, um, I guess there's some people out there that remember this. Hopefully, still remember this. Old cassettes with a program for 8-bit computers. And if you remember those, I probably after a while you started to use this instead. This is a 5-inch disc. disc. Um, in the old days, um, they were either single-sided, so you could write program on just one side of the disc, or you could flip them over and you have them double-sided. Or if you have real advanced uh, hardware, you, the hardware can read from both sides at the same time. Uh, this one is an original disk for the disk drive I have for my Commodore computer and it's not a hardware manufactured by the Commodore company in this case is uh, something known as an Enhancer 2000 uh, I don't know who manufactured those uh, but it works fine uh, this disk is also write protected this piece of you see there uh, Piece of plastic actually make sure the small cut here uh, isn't there, and that means the disc is right protected. So, if you remember those, I guess you also remember probably something like an apple or this one. This is Commodore 64. In the old days, there were three big manufacturers of computers out there. On computers, it was the Commodore. Uh, I guess here in Europe, the Commodore and the Sinclair Spectrum was the biggest. Over in the States, I guess the Apple II was the biggest one. Uh, I would die for an Apple II, an Apple fan as I am. And I only have the emulator for the, for the Apple IIe uh, to play with. Um, but I have the real piece of hardware here, as you can see. Uh, this machine I just bought. Uh, I haven't tried it yet. Uh, I've looked at the machine and I know it's manufactured in 1986. I also know the plastic is a bit yellow and looks a little bit... Hmm. And the yellow plastic isn't there because someone has smoked around the computer. It's there because of the quality of the plastic they used in the 1980s. It's quite a common problem with old Commodore machines um, that the plastic uh, gets yellow um, after a while, and this one has that problem too. But according to the person that sold me the machine, the machine should work perfectly. So I will try that and and uh, hope for the best. Uh, this one will be my reserve machine since I also have a Commodore 128 uh, in the corner. You can't see it right now. It's in the corner there. Um, uh, and the Commodore 128 I bought because in the old days when I used to have one of these Commodore 64s, I couldn't afford a uh, Commodore 128. So I bought myself one a couple of weeks ago when I couldn't resist it anymore. And the Commodore 128 is for the time when it was manufactured a really cool computer since it's basically three computers with two CPUs in. So it's a Commodore 128. Uh, it's also a fully working Commodore 64, uh, and the machine has also a C-Log 80 CPU. And, and with the Commodore 128, that meant you probably run CPM on that machine. That was 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 shipped with the machine, and CPM is one of these operating systems that are dead today. Uh, if you look for CPM on Google for it, uh, you will see that. That was the operating system that could have been the first choice for the PC. Um, when Microsoft was looking for an uh, operating system for the, for the PC, for IBM, uh, they actually started looking at CPM. But there is a store there that made them not show CPM, and instead they bought up uh, software from another company and called it MS-DOS. Uh, Microsoft DOS. So, um, well, in the old days, actually, when I used CPM, uh, it was better than DOS. But you know, the best one doesn't always win. 
Uh, and well, today DOS is dead. Well, not dead, but not. Uh, it's not the first choice of use on a computer anyway. So, okay. So if you buy yourself one of these old computers, and uh, let's say you don't have the hardware to read one of these, or you're getting tired of reading the content on one of these, and you, or you have a, your own emulator, you write your own software, and you don't like to try to put them on one of these, which can be hard these days. These days, believe me, I tried. It's not as simple as it might look. Um, what do you do? I want to transfer programs for my PC over to my real Commodore 64. Well, there are actually a couple of vendors out there that provide you with some hardware that allows you to do that. Uh, so what you often will need is, first of all, this. What is this? Well, it's an SD card, in my case, for gigabyte of SD card and a card reader that you put your SD card in and let's not destroy that SD card and then you put this into USB port on your PC and well that means it will act just like one of these normal USB sticks uh, and then you can copy program and content over to this and now you of course need something to put this into uh, that you can attach to your Commodore computer and in my case I have chosen one of these so what I do is put the SD card there and I, uh, I got it as a kit so I have built my own case around it and right now I have uh, taken off the top of the case you can see the, the, the hardware uh, this piece of hardware is known as the MMC Replay. I bought it because it's quite cheap and it works and it works very well according to all investigations I did on the internet before buying this. There are other alternatives uh, that also use SD cards. I know there's something known as uh, 5041U um, that's probably uh, have some better things with it than this card but um, this is okay and now what the 5041 can do that this card cannot do is actually take when you when you're running emulator on your pc what you will often download if you don't load all games or whatever is uh, images in a format known as d64 and what d64 format is is actually an emulating format of a diskette from the old time. Uh, so what, uh, to put the content of those D64s over to this, you can either put a D64 file directly on this card and put this one into your Commodore 64, but unfortunately the software in this card won't be able to read the content on these D64 images. Instead, you will, with this card, have a disk drive and uh, the software in this card will allow you to format this one and then it will copy the content from the D64 file over to this and you can use this. But now if you don't have a disk drive and you don't want to use those, what you can do is still download the D64 images from the internet. Then you should go out and Google and search for a program. Uh, I know there are at least one program as easily found, that you can run in Windows and uh, that allows you to take the content on the D64 image and put it down on your disk as regular PRG files. And those PRG files you can copy over to the SD card and then you put SD card into this reader, attach this to your to your Commodore computer and when you start up your Commodore computer will you get you will get a menu and from that menu you can start to navigate around the SD card and choose whatever program you want to run and run it directly and it works really well. So the 5041U as I told you about earlier it, it can read the D64 images directly so that's that's one thing that's better with that hardware. Well I see that my 10 minutes is nearly up here so I probably will do uh, chapter 2 of this, uh, uh, showing you more of this stuff.